Hello, I'm Ben from the English Lamppost Company and today we're going to show you the standard installation procedure for a Victorian cast iron lamppost. Here we have the materials that we're going to need. We have our four lengths of threaded bar, our washers nuts, our sand and then finally our cement. And then over here, unless you're going to be mixing your concrete by hand with our cement mixer, our water and our lamppost base and column. Now it's important when lying these down around the area that you're going to be installing is that you don't lie them on the ground. They are heavy and if you lie them down or drop them down you can risk chipping the powder coat which just creates extra work later touching it up. With each lamppost we do supply a ply template and this will line up with the holes at the base of the lantern or the base of the post. Now what's important is, is that they will only line up in one orientation. So if you would like your inspection chamber or a certain part of the decoration facing a certain direction, then it's important before you set your threaded uh, bar in place is that you label the template so you know which way the lamppost is going to be facing when it's finally installed. It's important when assessing your installation area that you're aware, especially if you're using a mini digger, that there isn't any existing cabling underneath the ground. For this particular lamppost, um, we're anticipating that we're going to need a two feet wide by approximately two and a half feet deep base. And that is for a lamppost which is weighing approximately 60 kg and is 3.25 meters tall. So when installing, it's important for the tradesperson to have the final say on the foundation size. Here, the ground type is particularly good in that it's not too sandy and it's not too clay. So we're going with a 60 by 60 centimetre, 80 centimetre deep foundation. Now, as we're digging our hole to 80 centimetres deep, you might find as you start to go down, it becomes increasingly difficult to do this with a shovel. So we're here using a post hole digger, which makes the job slightly easier. So now we've dug our 60 by 60 centimetres by 80 centimetre deep foundation. And you'll have noted that um, whilst we have to agree the foundation size with the tradesperson, actually the digging of the foundation and the trench could actually be done by a DIY proficient person. And now we're going to dig a ducting channel, which is going to be about a foot and a half deep. And that will contain our ducting, which then flows into the lamppost base or foundation, and then will allow us to run the cable through that ducting in up into the lamppost base. So we're now digging the trench, which is going to hold our flexible ducting, which our armoured cable will pass through. Now for this trench, we're digging approximately two feet deep, but it's always best check with your local tradesperson on the current regulations with, with regards to how deep that electrical cable should go. Now you could easily mix the sand and cement by hand but for a foundation size uh, of this it's much easier to use a uh, cement mixer. So for this installation we've got four lengths of M10 10mm 1 meter long threaded bar and all we've done here is just bend up at the ends ready for installation. So what we do now is we're just taping up the ends of our ducting just to ensure when we're casting the ducting into the foundation that we don't end up with any cement or concrete or debris falling into the ducting. So now all that we're doing is we're just going to drill a hole in the base of the ply template which is going to allow our ducting to pass through. So what we're doing now is we're attaching our threaded bar to our ply template. We're leaving two to three inches exposed um, above the ply template which we can obviously cut down later. And we're arranging a sort of box shape at the top and that will provide the best kind of support and anchorage for the lamppost to really grip into that concrete base. So 
So here we have a ply template and threaded bar lamppost anchor. Our tradesperson has opted for M10, one meter lengths of threaded bar. And what we're going to do now is we're going to tape up these lengths of thread here so that when we pour the concrete or the cement into the base, we don't end up with splashing all over the threads so that we can't then remove our nuts to place the lamppost base over the threads. So we've passed the flexible duct through our lamppost anchor and the other side we've just applied several cable ties just to stop the flexible ducting being pulled back into the concrete base when the concrete is poured. So here, as you can see, we have not yet dug the trench to carry our live armoured cable into the, the lamppost itself. Just as we're adding the cement now to the base, we've just covered over the ducting. So for this particular installation, we're using an all thread method with lengths of, of M10, one meter long threaded bar. However, there are other methods and with each lamppost, we do supply you with a set of masonry expanding raw bolts. Now with these, you'll set your concrete base into position and then using the ply template, you would drill four holes into your concrete. You would then push the sleeve of the raw bolt into the ground so you've got all four sleeves in position. Place your lamppost base over the holes and then apply your bolts through and tighten up. And as they are tightened, the nut rises up and the casing of the raw bolt expands and anchors the lamppost in place. An additional method of installation is using uh, a root anchor and this will be cast directly in to your concrete base leaving the base plate exposed and you will then bolt the lamppost directly to the root anchor and this is an example of a of a root anchor here so we're just ensuring now that our concrete base is nice and level however should you find that yours is slightly off what you can do is you can use washers in order to adjust the lamppost bases uh, angle if you like at the final stages of installation so for the purposes of this demonstration, we've obviously used a trade professional um, to create a lamppost foundation. However, as you will have seen, it's not overly complex work. So any DIY proficient person could prepare the base um, and have that in place and then allow an electrician to come in at the latter stages just to complete the wiring work. We've now finished pouring our concrete foundation. The foundation size was 60 by 60 by 80 centimetres deep and we used one and a half bags of cement, three bags of sand and nine bags of ballast. You'll note that we've dropped the foundation level probably an inch below ground level which means we can apply topsoil and grass seed or a nice decorative uh, gravel or pebble just to finish right up until the lamppost base. You'll then, depending on weather conditions, allow your concrete foundation to set for a day or a couple of days depending on weather conditions. So we've now come out the following day, our foundation is sufficiently hardened and we've removed the tape that it would apply to our threads and removed the nuts and it's now time to remove the ply template. So we don't need that again now. What we've done is we've removed our taped end on our ducting and we have threaded through our armoured cable uh, which has a glanded end. So it's now time to lift our lamppost base over our threaded bar. But just before we do that, we loosen the two flathead screws that go and hold on our lamppost inspection chamber cover, like so. This then reveals the lugs which hold the cover in place and also our lamppost earthing point. So we're now gonna thread our lamppost base over our threaded bar and allow the armoured cable to travel up into the post. Now, as the post base is quite heavy, it's probably best to have two people do that job. So, we've now applied our washers and nuts. At this stage, if you need to make any final levelling adjustments, you can use washers or square steel plate 
underneath and slides over the threads in order to make any final adjustments to the levelling of your lamppost base. Now as you can see this four-sided black Victorian lantern has a hinged door and we've now wired our brass bayonet B22 bulb holder using a standard three core flex and this should be done by a competent person or an, an electrician or tradesperson. If I just undo the bulb holder here, just so you can see the bulb holder all wired in. And we tend to do this while the lantern is on the ground as it's a lot easier than doing it when the lantern is mounted on top of the lamppost. We're often asked what is the ideal bulb to use within a Victorian lantern? Well firstly you have to decide on the bulb holder you're going to use. By default we supply a bayonet cap B22 bulb holder. Alternatively we can supply an E27 Edison screw fix bulb holder. And in a lantern of this size ideally you need a bulb which is in proportion. Here we've got a 4 watt LED glow bulb. That will output at about 320 lumens, which will give us a good area of light coverage. And we've opted for an amber or warm white coloration, which gives us those tones which would be similar to an original Victorian gas lantern. Now, with each lamppost set, we supply you with a special hex key, and you'll need this because this is the only hex key which will fit the fixing points which are on the lamppost itself. Now, the lantern has four fixing points on the frog collar. You'll need to slacken these off in order to slide the lantern over the lamppost spigot. It's best to do this at ground level and then we'll lift our pole and lantern up and slide them into the lamppost base. Now as we're doing now, before you finally place the lamppost pole and lantern into the lamppost base, it's always good just to check the other fixing points are all tight and secure before finally erecting the lamppost. So we've lifted our lamppost column up, we've slid it into our lamppost base and we're now tightening the stainless steel fixing points, locking the central column in place. So we've now slid our lamppost column into our lamppost base and using the four stainless steel locking points and the hex key we've tightened it up and fixed the lamppost column into position. It's really important that this is done by more than one person as the pole and the lantern is exceptionally heavy. So at this point now using a spirit level we can check the alignment of our central column and using the fixing points, make any final adjustments that are necessary. So here we're using a weatherproof connection box to connect our armoured cable and gland to our three core electrical cable. Our electrician is now using an earthing tag on his armoured and connecting that up to the earthing point on the lamppost. So whilst we've wanted to show you as much information as possible with regards to the electrical installation of the lamppost, we do recommend that this is completed by a qualified electrician. So here we've used an IP66 junction box within the inspection chamber of the lamppost. So there you have it, there's the installation of one of our cast iron Victorian lampposts. Now just left to do is the beautifying and the, the, the making good of the area in which we've installed it. My name is Ben, if you have any questions with regards to our lighting range, please feel free to call and speak to myself or my colleague David within our offices.
Thank you.